model is uh, reasonable or not. Now, this reminds me of uh, <coughs> what um, my head, my boss, said this morning. Uh, Prof Wong this morning in his uh, welcome speech said that uh, there are many problems we, we want to solve. For instance, uh, how do we know whether it's going to rain tomorrow? Right? And he said that he came this morning and it rained. So um, perhaps uh, predicting uh, weather <laughs> is, is, is a real problem and uh, we hope to solve it. Now, um, <coughs> my son, who is in primary school, has a model for that. So he told me that all you need to do is to uh, look out the window in the evening. <laughs> and if the sky is red, tomorrow it won't rain. That's his model. So uh, last week, we tested his model with some data. It worked. All right? On a Wednesday evening, the sky was red. So the next morning, the next day, it didn't rain. Yesterday, we looked out the window. The sky was still red. This morning, it rained. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, his model didn't stand the test of the, the data. So, so what I'm trying to say is that it's important after developing the model and getting a solution that we um, test the model against some data. This is a process we call model validation. Uh, sometimes after uh, comparing the model with data, we might go back and refine the model. Uh, we refine the model typically by um, look back at the assumptions and perhaps modifying the uh, equations. And because if the equations are modified, maybe we need a different solution or different method of solution for those equations. And this whole thing, whole picture is called the modeling process. Now, I was told that no talk on mathematical modeling is complete without a picture like this. That's why I'm showing you this diagram. <coughs> now, basically, uh, <coughs> This is the um, uh, so-called working definition that I will use uh, for the rest of the talk today. Now, <clears throat> before that, let me tie in with the theme of um, the conference this year. And the theme is problem solving. So I'm going to show you three problems from three different levels. The first one is from upper primary um, level. Uh, it says that Paul had 30 more marbles than Peter. After Peter gave Paul 15 marbles, Paul had twice as many as marbles as Peter. How many marbles do they have all together? This is not from me. This is from an assessment book by A-star Problems for Upper Primary. I'm not advertising for anybody. I just lifted it up from, from that uh, particular source. Uh, this is a second example of problem solving uh, for lower secondary. It says that a cargo container is a cuboid. Okay, that's 6.06 .06 meter long, 2.44 meter wide, and 2.59 meter high. And you're asked for some, uh, you're given certain dimensions, you're asked for some um, volumes and, um, and so on. I think volume and total surface area, yeah. And this is from Discovering Mathematics, another uh, textbook. The third one, H2 Maths, from H2 Mathematics for A level. Spherical balloon being deflated at a certain rate, and so on and so forth. Uh, now, if we were to uh, look back at all these problems, um, you find that in all the cases, um, those problems focuses, focus on the use of some kind of mathematics. See, the use of some kind of mathematics. Actually, they are not really problems. I mean, who cares what Peter and Paul have? <laughs> Whether they have marbles or balls or trading cards, it's not a problem, right? If you really want to know how many marbles they have all together, just ask them to show me the marbles and count. <laughs> I mean, what is the big problem? <laughs> so they're not really a problem. They are actually, the focus is on the use of the mathematics. Right? Uh, similarly, um, if you look at um, the problem on the container, which is a cuboid. The main thing is to find the surface area and volume of the cuboid. Of course, the authors tried to dress it up to make it a real-life problem by giving you some realistic values like 6.06 .06 meter and so on, right? Uh, but the important thing is um, the formula for the volume and the surface area of that particular um, 
3D shape. But again, uh, who cares about the, the, the volume unless you say that the volume of the container has got to do with maybe some uh, profit and revenue and so on, and you're trying to maximize or minimize certain things. Then that's a different thing altogether. Uh, <clears throat> So um, my point here is that the problems that we've seen uh, shows that um, in, in some sense, problem solving focuses on the use of the mathematics more than the problem. Whereas in mathematical modeling, the focus is on the problem. You remove the problem, you have nothing to do. No, nothing to solve because that is the heart and soul of mathematical modeling, the problem itself. You can use different methods, different approaches, to solve the problem, but the main thing is the problem itself. So it's a little bit of a, uh, uh, funny terms used here because problem solving, as far as I'm concerned, I think problem solving focuses on the use of mathematics and mathematical modeling focuses on the problem. So it's a little bit like um, uh, you, you drive on the parkway, like East Coast Parkway, you drive on the parkway, but you park on the driveway. Uh, <clears throat> so there are different approaches to uh, mathematical modeling, and let me now go through the different um, <coughs> uh, approaches, and then I'll look through, uh, I'll give you one or two examples uh, from each approach. Uh, <coughs> the first approach is empirical modeling, and in empirical models, we base, uh, empirical modeling is based uh, largely on a set of uh, known data, and we try to um, perhaps fit a curve that will explain or, or, or tell us something about the data. Simulation models, uh, usually uh, we, in simulation modeling, we have a set of rules that tells us how a process can take place, the mechanism and dynamics of a certain phenomenon of process. And then uh, we normally use a machine, a computer program, to simulate what will happen over time. Okay. In deterministic uh, model, we have a set of equations that are based or developed or formulated based on uh, the dynamics of a particular system. And uh, in the case of H2, H3 mathematics in our A-level syllabus, this is the area that we are focusing on. So uh, for that reason also, when I am uh, going through the examples, I will be focusing more on this particular case. And finally, there's stochastic models. And in stochastic modeling, one deals with uh, some kind of probability, probabilistic uh, um, entities. Uh, there's there's um, uncertainty and randomness involved in the, in the model. <coughs> so let us look at um, the first example. In example one, <coughs> uh, <coughs> um, we have, let me, Okay, this is a. Uh, why is this? Right, um, I'm showing you uh, on the visualizer uh, my honest thesis. I'm telling a few stories. I started off with a story from a, a competition last week. Uh, uh, now I'm showing you, uh, I'm telling you another story uh, uh, from my university days, and that was my um, uh, honors thesis. Uh, the reason I point this out is because uh, uh, there is a, a problem that I need to uh, solve, a problem that I need to solve uh, uh, when I was doing mathematical modeling of blood flow through arteries. And uh, <clears throat> the problem is that um, I, I, I need to um, basically uh, find a relationship between the stress and strain of a particular artery, okay? And um, I have the data, but I do not have the function that will describe the relationship. So this was my problem, and basically, uh, <coughs> this is the data. It's the same as what you see here. All right? <coughs> And um, <clears throat> from my reading at that time, uh, I know that uh, this is a relationship that I can adopt or I can try to um, um, formulate. 
Uh, unfortunately, there are a couple of, there's, there's a parameter here. There are two parameters, A and K, which I do not know, and I need to um, find out <coughs> what, or estimate what A and K might be. So, um, <coughs> maybe I continue with the story. What happens was that I need, I need to solve that problem, and um, in those days, I did not have uh, Excel or other spreadsheet. So um, I, I went through uh, developing or coming up with some kind of a method and so on, um, trying to uh, do some regression. And I um, essentially used the least square method um, and um, generate some kind of algorithm and found those values here and here. <coughs> Okay. But that took me a long time because um, I didn't have the, um, the, the skills or the, um, the, the machines to help me. But 